this is a fly that generally needs no introduction. And this is a woolly bugger. As I mentioned in a video I did a few weeks ago on the woolly worm, I was going to do a series of videos on the woolly bugger because there's a certain way the creator of the woolly bugger tied it, which isn't that different than what you see uh, in a lot of videos and a lot of instruction. And then there's a more, I guess, contemporary way that it's tied these days. A lot of people tie it. None of them are wrong or necessarily right. It's just a different way of doing it. And so this is the version that Russell Blessing tied. It has just a couple little nuances to it, but essentially it's a woolly bugger, just like what you see most people tie these days. Fantastic fly. I can't stress enough. Have some of these in your box in different colors, different sizes, different combinations. Take a look at the book Woolly Wisdom. It has a whole article in there, um, or I should say a segment in there about Russell Blessing and the creation of the woolly bugger or the modern woolly bugger and it has a lot of great patterns in there. So that's the Wooly Bugger, the Russell Blessing version, and I will get started. I'm going to start my woolly bugger with a hook on the vise. This is a Mustad 9672 in a size 6. It's a 4X long streamer hook. 3 or 4X, even 5X long streamer hooks will work for these. It depends on how long you want the body to be. I'm going to debarb the hook and I'm going to attach my thread. For the thread, I'm using a UTC 140 denier in an olive. You could certainly go with a Danville 6 odd or even a Uni 8 odd if that's what you have. I just happen to have this olive thread out, so that's what I'm using. Attach my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook and run it down the length of the shank, a little bit past the barb to tie in the tail. I have waxed my thread, put a little bit more wax on it. Just helps get a little bit more grip when you're tying in materials. Woolly buggers are real simple. There's three ingredients. There's a tail, which is made from marabou. I'm doing an olive woolly bugger today, so this is just olive marabou. There is a body of chenille. This is a rayon chenille, a medium in olive, and a saddle hackle. And I'm using some from a Whiting's bugger pack. Just a long saddle hackle. That's the main three ingredients. There are other variations to this. As I mentioned in uh, the book, Woolly Wisdom, there's tons of variations to this because it's such a simple fly and, and it's very effective. So what I'm focused on today is how Russell Blessing, who was actually the considered the creator of the woolly bugger, the modern woolly bugger, uh, how he tied it. And so that's what I'm doing today. So I'm going to tie in the tail. I've got my marabou feather here. The tail is going to be about the length of the body. I'm going to get another feather here. This one's sometimes, it depends on, on the look, what you're going for. When I collect this, those are a little bit skinnier and stiffer than I want. I want a little bit more body to it. So I'll hunt through here and I'll find a feather where the tips aren't quite so, there we are so sparse pull some of the fluff off of that now some people will even clip the tips out of these but again this is how russell blessing does it at least according to the book woolly wisdom you can dampen that down a little bit if it helps to collect it i'm going to tie that in the length of the shank, or at least the length of, or I should say at least the length of the shank, but even the length of the hook. I like a little bit longer. I'm 
you can wrap up the hook shank over the excess marabou. It gives it a little bit more bulk. This is rather optional. I think that is how he does it in the book. And that's how I generally have always done it. Just gives the body a little bit more bulk. Nice thing is you also don't have to be super delicate or uh, fastidious on these flies in terms of the underbody. And they tend to just kind of look shaggy. That's what you want. I'm going to tie in next the rayon. Often people will tie in the hackle, and generally that's how I do it. But in order to do it the way Russell Blessing actually did it, we tie in the hack or the, the chenille next. I'm sorry. Trying to walk and chew gum here at the same time. Leave that hanging, and then we're going to go to our hackle here. And what I want is I want the resulting barbs to be about, mm, I like them one and a half to maybe even two times the gap of the hook. Because you're using a saddle here and the barbs are shorter on this end than they are here, you end up with a nice taper on this. So holding that by the tip, I'll stroke those barbs outward so I can tie this all in right by the tip here. I don't need all of that, so I'm just going to shorten that a little bit. I'm going to tie this forward a little. Notice that I'm not wrapping all the way down to that chenille, and there's a reason for that. I'm going to tie and anchor that in, and I'm going to get my thread up here to just about an eye length, maybe half an eye length behind the eye of the hook. The reason for that gap there is the way that Russell Blessing ties the woolly bugger is he puts the, a first wrap right behind the hackle. Now I'm going to shorten that up a little bit and I'm going to attach my hackle pliers. Because this chenille often, the rayon chenille, gets kind of flat in the, uh, in the packaging. So I'm going to twist this up. This is going to look, make it look a little bit fuller so when I make the body, it just comes out a little bit better. Like I said, here's the key in Russell Blessing's version. He puts one wrap of chenille right behind the hackle. Now, all the other wraps just go right in front of each other. Tell you, it's, it's quicker to uh, just tie the fly than it is to actually explain it and everything and do a video on it. It's, it's a, such a quick and easy fly. That's why it turns out that the woolly bugger is often one of the first flies that people learn how to tie. It was the second one that I would teach in the beginning fly tying classes. Now I want my thread right up behind the eye of the hook here. Now I'm going to palmer this, and really you only need about five, six turns of the hackle. It doesn't have to be, you know, uh, really, really full. I get one turn right back where the hackle is first tied in, and then I'll wrap this forward probably about five times, maybe six. And then I like to, when I get up here to behind the eye of the hook, put in a couple of wraps, and this is going to give me just a little bit fuller. Um, face to the fly. You can even put in some more if you want. This hackle is just a hair long. Then I like to, once I get that secured, just stroke all that back. This is why I'm right behind the eye of the hook. And I'm going to put in a small little head right behind the eye of the hook. This part here pops off. 
by doing that that way it also it's easy to take the hackle off but also all of the hackles I should say barbs right up front here are facing pointing in a rearward direction so i don't have any that are trapped under the thread or anything like that yeah these are just a little long but it really it doesn't this is all going to kind of sweep back when it when it flows through the water and uh that is a good looking little woolly bugger a bit of head cement that will secure that and that is how russell blessing would tie his woolly buggers If you haven't got a copy of Wooly Wisdom, I recommend it if you like doing Wooly Buggers and Wooly Worms. Uh, they are a super, super versatile fly. Great to have this in your box, especially in the central Indiana here. Warm water fishing, the, this is just a great producer. It's a wonder, wonderful fly. Easy to do different color combinations of this put in some flash you know things like this a cone head or a bead on it all kinds of stuff you can do with this now the next video is going to show you how a lot of people a more i don't want to say modern but a more uh, current approach to tying the woolly bugger there's a couple of different ways and then there's going to be a third video that shows a less conventional way of tying a woolly bugger, but very interesting. So that's the woolly bugger, the Russell Blessing version of the woolly bugger. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.